Welcome to October Gallery and to this exhibition, In the Light. I want to particularly welcome our very special guest, James Barner, who is here with us. I also want to extend my salutes to the artists who are not with us. This is Alexi Peskin, who is currently in Kinshasa in the Congo. Um, Zana Mazobuka, who is currently in South Africa. And uh, Benji Reed, who is in the north of England, will come to us next week. So I have all of these artists sending their great greetings to us. In the light, for me, the exhibition title references both the light, this brilliant light, all the subjects of these photographs stand in. But it also references for me the spiritual and metaphysical light, all the subjects emanate in those pictures. I'm very happy um, to welcome to our gallery for the first time, Sana Masobuka, a young artist and creative director um, from South Africa. This is her first exhibition here, and I think also, possibly also in London, I'm not certain, I will ask my colleague here. Yeah. Um, and um, she connects in her works very strongly to her culture, the Endebele culture. Now, the Endebele culture is extremely precious to us. It's a culture in South Africa. And in 1996, when we held the Music Festival of South African Music, a, a wide range of Endebele artists were staying with us. And they painted a big board with their beautiful geometrical patterns and colors. And they painted it on the back of the sand mandala painting that had just been done by monks from Mongolia. So this was such a precious piece. And I fondly, fondly remembered it. And I remember them. And I'm so glad that we have reconnected to um, Zana's culture. Alexi Peskin, um, in his work of John and Moons, he worked with young men or young boys in Senegal. And um, they were orphans, and they asked them what their dreams were and what they visualized in the future. And they said they were hoping to become astronauts. So he made a whole, they made together, a whole outfits and helmets out of tomato cans. And this series of works relates to that. For um, Alexi, it is very important to travel through Africa, to visit all countries on the continent if he can, and to take up residences everywhere. He's currently in the Congo where he's slicing up tree trunks to make his nail portraits in different shapes. The other artist who's not with us, um, but he's magnificent, is Benji Reed. Benji Reed is represented in the second room, and you see a whole range of floating figures. He used to direct the Black Theatre Company, um, which combined different forms of dance. When he had to close it down, he took several years to find out what his next step in art would be. And it was photographic, photographing himself that became his, um, that became his form of expression. And he... Um, He's really a photo choreographer. He takes himself as the subject. Um, he floats in his front room. He's never told us how he does that, but he knows how to float in front room. He floated there all through COVID. <laughs> and he finds himself magical pops from all over the place and creates this extraordinary, really ah, inspirational and spiritual installation. They are really sort of reflections of his souls and metaphysical apparition. Um, and of course, last but not least, the greatest master of all, James Bonner, Yay. who is with us. Yay. He has dedicated his life to photography, starting with the Ever Young Studio. Why did he choose such a title? Because he's the man who stays ever young. I've never seen anybody anybody who was so young, always. Um, ever, yeah, so this, I remember first meeting James in 154, and he came to our booth, and he talked to us, and followed by, followed, he was followed by Daniele Tamani, another fabulous photographer, 
um, Italian photographer who photographed the Sopers in Brazzaville. Mm. And we decided to do a combination exhibition of two artists. Um, Daniele's works were framed in white on this wall, and James Barner's black and white works were framed in black on the other wall, and it was a beautiful conversation they held. And it is ever since then that we've been working with James, and he is such a wonderful artist and such a great storyteller. And I'm delighted that um, Eleri, who is our curator here, will speak about James, introduce him, and that James himself will be able to say a few words to us. Thank you. Hello. Um, as Olivia has just said, um, I'm Hilary, I'm the curator of the October Gallery. Uh, I have the pleasure and delight to introduce you to James Barner, master photographer whose work has spanned six decades and jumped from Accra in Ghana to London. He's an inspiration to generations and um, an inspiration to myself as well. Um, James has spanned genres as well as continents, um, moving from photojournalism to studio portraiture to social documentation and his images speak for themselves. They captivate uh, his subjects and captivate the audience as well. So, without further ado, I'd love to welcome to the stage, <laughs> James Barnett. So, I'm happy to welcome all of you. I'm happy to welcome all of you. I haven't done anything like that before, but uh, I hope I'll enjoy it with your help. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, I don't know that so much has been said that I don't know where to start or how to start. Um, this is a, a surprise to me, but a pleasure. Uh, to see this work, which was uh, exhibited how many years ago? Um, six years ago. Six years ago, to come and see it again, you know, and be like that. Um, there are quite a lot of artists here, so I don't know really what to say. You know, so many artists in various ways. I started as a photographer talking about Ever Young. Let me give you the story straight. I was apprenticed to my cousin, who was a studio photographer. And he insisted on large plate, like plate cameras and negatives, glass negatives. So much so, he didn't want to see any raw film in the studio. He was bent on that. And at one time, I wanted to leave. And uh, he convinced me, he said, it's not you, I mean, it's your mother. That's why I'm teaching you. You know, it's your mother. So whatever I teach you, that's it. When you go into a raw film, you will start making money and will not learn what I'm teaching you. You know, you won't have the patience to learn the retouching and working with large negatives. So, one has to learn retouching. And when I finished and wanted to open the studio, I thought, what should I call it? With retouching, 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 making people young. <laughs> and I remembered that when I was at school, our teacher uh, read us a passage in what they call, was then called English comprehension, yeah. where you will read several times and you answer questions, or you are read to, and then you answer the questions. And I said, do you remember we did something like that where there was Ever Young or Aduna? And he said, yes. And he went to his room and brought me the book. And the story goes like this. Aduna 
the beautiful young goddess of the Norsemen lived in a pretty grove called Everyam. She had a, a casket full of wonderful apples. A hero might come, tired and weary to Iduna's grove, feeling that he was growing old. Then Iduna would give him an apple. And as soon as he had eaten it, he would feel fresh and young again. It wasn't surprising that Iduna's grove was never lonely. It was always full. And what was still more wonderful was that the supply of apples never failed. As soon as the last fruit was given away, the casket was filled again by an invisible hand. That, that's the story. And then uh, there were 10 questions. One was, or one was, what other title would you give this passage? And instead of Iduna's group, I called it Ever Young. This was 1945 when I was in Sunday 7, ready to leave school. And it was in my mind when I finished photography, I remembered it and went to our teacher. And he remembered it too. So the Ever Young was not so much me remaining young as making people younger than they were. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily, it remains so. Honestly, I have lost a lot of negatives. Otherwise, we would see here the results of retouching and how it made people look younger with all the lines showing you in gold. But, uh, I would say I was the first uh, photographer reporter or journalistic photographer in Ghana. I was the first to be employed as a uh, photojournalist because uh, during my time there were no rotary presses, papers or machines that printed. Uh, photographs or newspapers with, with uh, photographs daily. So everything was done by letter fresh until the mirror came there in 1950. They wanted to open one to cover the independence, to cover the growth of Ghana. They had one in Nigeria called the Times and they wanted one in Ghana. And uh, the director, or Cecil King, who was the mirror head, he came with an old photographer to look for journalists and you know photographers. And he was sent. The photographer was sent to look for one. And he went to, or he was a director to my cousin who trained me. And he said, oh, I'm a portrait photographer. I don't, I don't do this sort of thing, but I know somebody who does. And he was sent to me. They looked at my work. They said, oh, not quite, but they will train you. But come uh, to the press. So I was the first person they employed and trained together with journalists and other things for about two or three months. So I boast in basic points and say that I'm the first photojournalist in Ghana. <laughs> Fast back, I managed to come to England and I managed to study another profession that's color printing or color processing, which to some extent is different from taking photographs. You know, you, the photographer, however good he is, does it and sends it to the, to the lab to be processed. And uh, I happened to, that happened to be the 
number one color laboratory in Britain is in Kent, or it was at the time. No machines, automatic machines and things like that. Everything was done by camera and hand. And that's where I studied color laboratory. You know, I said it in the color, it's called CPL. Anybody knows CPL, Color Processing Laboratory. It was in the hidden bridge in Kent. You know, and that's where I said it. So I returned to Ghana in 1970 to also establish the first uh, color laboratory. And honestly, I'm very proud about these two achievements. Uh, the next one, which you know, um, uh, announcing now is to encourage or learn, I mean, teach Ghanaian photog photographers to start exhibiting their work. At the moment, my work is all over, and it seems as if I'm the only photographer from Ghana, which is not true. There were photographers before me, me, and there are still photographers who are doing better work. But there should be a technique or a way by which they can exhibit their work, even in Ghana, and then outside. But they are not doing it. You see, and I would like to be the one who will show them the way or force them or <laughs> at the moment, I'm the only one exhibiting in Ghana. You know, even this year, I'm going to exhibit in uh, Tamale, maybe in aeroplanes. Nobody has exhibited his photographs in an aeroplane. I've been invited to come and do it. So that's something else. Uh, we will, at 93 now, there's a lot of stories, and we will be on and on and on. But let's stop here. If anybody has a question, ask me. Thank you very much.